Hi everyone, I'm Steve Brooks, CTO at Bamboo and Cloud, now part of PAX8. And this is my Dynamics 365 Business Central Wave 1 2023 Top 10. Bit of a mouthful there, but let's get started. So this is known as the spring release, and that can only mean one thing. It's lambs, it's daffodils, it's a Business Central roadmap update. So just as a reminder, the updates come twice a year. There's been over 500 changes since Business Central was first released in 2018. The Wave 1 release comes in spring, that's normally in around April time, and then the Wave 2 release comes in autumn or fall, and that comes out around October. Wave 1 2023 has over 50 updates on the roadmap. We're going to look at the top 10 standout features for today, and you will have seen scrolling through some of the features that have come before. So, first of all, top thing, absolute number one piece of functionality is Business Central in Teams for free. So there is a concept of a light user in Business Central and that is a useful functionality for people that need to read and do some light postings. But one of the things that was announced at the tail end of last year is the fact that we'll now be able to use Business Central data in a read-only format in Teams for free. And there's a video here of that working and it's been made simpler now in Wave 1 release for 2023. So you can set up access with M365 licenses in a much quicker way. There's an assisted setup to do it. You can see what's needed to jump into the admin center and define the security groups. And the whole thing has been made simpler and easier for end users to be able to do that without having to necessarily have that change made by partners. So what this lets you do is have complete read access to all the data in Microsoft Teams. Next up on the list is intercompany setup. Now again, intercompany is something that's been part of Business Central for a long time, but the Wave 1 release 2023 has made the setup of it much simpler. It brings it all into one place, and you can see here there's a new wizard for how to do that. The chart of accounts can be copied from the standard chart of accounts. You can really clearly see what's been configured and what's not, and that's always been one of the issues with doing the intercompany setup, making sure that the business units, the partners, the auto acceptive transactions, the chart of accounts configuration, it's sometimes difficult to work out if you've done all of that. The new setup wizard makes sure that you've got it all checked off and that it's gonna work the first time you turn it on. Number three is analysis mode. Now this is, this is something unbelievable. I mean, you can see on the video here, this is an incomplete new piece of functionality. It's a bit like using pivot tables inside Business Central. You've got this analyze button on almost every page, although it probably lends itself best to the ledger entries, general ledger entries, customer vendor, bank ledger entries, that sort of thing. And you can see here that we can build a pivot table to show our monthly results. You can look at kind of groupings based on month, based on account category. You can drag, you can drop. You can add filters just like you already could in Business Central. You can export the data to Excel for more analysis and you can put on even more analysis filters based on the fields that are available in Business Central. So this is a bit like pivot tables. It's got some aspects of jet reporting. We've not played with it as much as uh, we want to yet, but honestly, this is gonna be a bit of a game changer for people that are doing reporting from Business Central. Next up, number four, master data management. So this is another really cool feature, particularly for those of you who have got groups of companies. So you can see here there's a new wizard and what this does is means that setup data that you choose from one company can automatically be copied across into another, including master data. So we've got this configured for customers now. We're in Cronus USA. Flick over to my company, create a new customer. You can see here that as soon as this new customer is created, this video is done live create a new customer, put them in, flick back over to the Cronus environment and jump into the customer's menu and you can see that that customer has been copied straight across. You can do this with everything, dimensions, vendors, items, customers, you can choose what gets put across. There's really granular control over the fields that you want to move across as well. So really cool functionality for people who want to keep data in sync. Great example would be things like adding a new chart of accounts code. If you're still going to use consolidation, you want to make sure that all of those accounts exist in both companies or all your companies. That's exactly the sort of thing that this is useful for. Number five is statistical accounts. Now, this is a really cool thing. And what's happened here is we can see on the screen on the video that there's something new called statistical accounts. Now, these are things like 
employees, like office space, like warehouse locations. And the idea is that you would set these up, configure the master data around these. So headcount information or how many warehouses you've got or really anything else that's going to be used for analysis, but different to dimensions. So this isn't just cost centers and things like that because all of these statistical accounts have their own ledger entries. Where this becomes really useful is if you jump into the financial reports, what was called account schedules, you can add these new statistical accounts as lines on the financial reports. So you can start saying things like it says on screen here, number of employees as a statistical account, you can do things like revenue by employee or costs by square meter or any of those kind of calculations that you would have had to have used external data for previously. So it's a really cool thing to include. All of these um, entries will be tagged in the same way or rather there'll be ledger entries created at the same time you make an adjustment. So you'll know what the balance was at a certain point in time. And it's a really clever piece of functionality. And I'm excited to see how we can do that reporting based on these these new types of accounts. Next up, now there isn't a video for this, but there are 31 new countries added to the supported list, uh, adds to the already, I think, 100 list of companies or 100 list of countries that exist already. It's cool simply because it means that Business Central is available to more companies in more territories and there is localized support, localized availability. So if you are multi-company, if you are multi-country, then having more countries on the list is a fantastic thing. Number seven is adaptive cards in Teams. Now you've always been able, or for the last few releases, been able to post details from Business Central into Teams. What's really cool about this is that they can take more information from elsewhere in the system. So things like Power Automate flows can show that in this case here, one of the vendors has got a balance over $2,000. What this is useful for is keeping you in Teams for longer. and presenting more information from Business Central to other team members and allowing you to work inside teams without having to keep switching systems. With that in mind, number eight on the list is better approvals. And we're using more advanced approval workflows in Power Automate. It allows you to do things like approval on mobile devices, approval through teams. It supports a chain of approvers. And this is something I think where we've had approvals in kind of two flavors in Business Central, what was there out of the box pre Power Automate and then the new Power Automate workflows. So bringing a more enhanced and capable approval workflow using Power Automate is, is fantastic. And again, I think it shows that integration of Power Platform throughout the rest of the Dynamics 365 ecosystem. Number nine is business events. Now, this is really cool. And again, it uses Power Platform. What we've got here is a new category of things like quote to cash and purchase to pay. And we can say that when something specific happens, then use that as the trigger for more advanced workflow capability. So if a sales invoice is posted, post that to Teams, send an email, send something to the customer saying thank you. The useful thing is it lets you have a sort of if this, then that style app or workflow, which is keeping the ability to write these workflows with the citizen developers and not necessarily having to go to your partner or one of your developers to build build out these workflows. And then finally, number 10, not something that anybody necessarily wants to see, but more user friendly errors. It's uh, a good thing to have in the system. So error messages are much clearer. They've got less technical detail and some of the areas of the system have now got a button to help you get unblocked. So rather than just that kind of cryptic message saying there is nothing to post or this must not be blank, you get something more informative that will help you get unblocked and carry on about your business. So for more roadmap info, go to the Microsoft website, learn.microsoft.com. And that's all for now. We will see you for the full release later in the year. Thanks very much.